Hi, are you tired of losing points for simple formatting errors in your college or high school papers? Or perhaps you'd like to avoid losing those points in the first place. If so, stick around and we'll go over everything you need to know in order to have perfectly documented papers every time. Hello and welcome. I'm Professor Lucas and I'm here to help you with all your reading, writing, and studying challenges with clear, helpful, and focused videos. As my channel name hints, I've been a college professor in English for over a decade and I tutored for a decade before that and I want to use all of that experience to help you. Today, we're going to cover everything you need to know to format your paper in the MLA style that most professors require. We will cover creating your header and what should be in it, as well as avoiding the most common header mistake that people make, the information you need above the title, as well as the paper title itself, spacing, margins, and indenting the first line of your paragraph, font, as well as mentioning some things to avoid along the way. And stay tuned until the end for a tip about how you can avoid having to do this every single time you start a new document. For now, let's dive into your paper. When you first open a Microsoft Word document, you should see something like this. I'm using Microsoft Word 360, but the interface is identical in most fairly recent versions. If you do have an older version and want a video on how to do it in previous versions of Word, let me know in the comments below. I have PDF documents I created showing step-by-step -step how to format, including screenshots, and will be happy to provide them if I know that you want it. Now, the first thing you want to know is actually what not to do. Don't include a title page. MLA guidelines specifically forbid you to have a title page. Let's begin at the very top. The first thing that you'll want to add is your header. MLA doesn't use footers, so we can ignore them, but they're linked with the headers and are accessible together. There are two ways to access the header and footer. The first is the simplest. Just double-click in the area of the header to make it appear. You can see that light gray lines showing in the header and footer areas appear once you have access. To get out again, you can click this big red X or simply double click in the main body of the paper. The other way to access the header and footer is to go to the Insert menu tab and select Header. Scroll down to the bottom and select Edit Header. Notice your cursor blinking in the header indicating that you have gotten in successfully. Now. MLA requires that you have your last name and the page number right aligned in the header. First, we need to get the cursor over to the right so the text will be on the correct side. In order to do that, click the Home menu tab and then click the Right Align button. The first element of your header is your last name, so you just type it in. My last name is Lucas, so I'll type that in. Then you hit the space bar one time and it's time to add the page number. However, you want to avoid the common blunder of just typing in the number, as that number will appear on every page, and the last thing we want is for every page to say that it is page 1. Instead, we want to use the menu to insert the page number, so we need to go back to the header and footer menu by clicking the title here. Then, we go to the page number tool over here on the left and click it, selecting current position and plain number. This means that as you add pages, the page numbers will automatically be correct. The second page will say 2, the third page will say 3, and so on. This completes everything we need to do for the header. The next element required for an MLA formatted paper is the block of information that you should have in the upper left. Now, MLA requires that you have four elements in the upper left. Let's take a quick peek at what they are before we enter them into your paper. The first is the easiest, which is your name. Put the name that you use in the course, which is usually your first and last name. 
For online classes, you should match the name you're enrolled under. The next line should be the name of the professor or instructor. For example, if your class is taught by Professor Vasquez, then that's what you should put. Be careful to spell their name correctly. No matter who you are, it's always annoying when someone spells your name incorrectly. The next section is the name, title, or number of the class, and the last line is the date, where you put the due date of the assignment, not the date you completed it. However, the date needs to be in MLA format, which has the day first, then the month spelled out, and finally a four-digit year. You can see an example of how this looks in the date I've included in the slide. So, the elements are your name, the instructor's name, the course, and the date. Let's add those to our document. We will make sure that the cursor is left aligned and start with the first element. I will put my name, hit enter, and we'll pretend that the teacher's name is Professor Smith. Next is the title of the class, for example, English 1A. Finally, we add the date in MLA format, pretending that this assignment is due on July 11, 2018. The day is first, followed by the name of the month spelled out, and then the year with no commas included. And that's it! The information in the upper left-hand corner is complete. The next element required for an MLA formatted paper is the title. You should not be skipping any lines above or below the title, and the title itself should not have any special formatting like being bold or a larger font size or anything like that. MLA guidelines state that it should be plain and the same font and size as the rest of the paper. There are only two things different about the title. You capitalize all major words, and it is centered. For example, say that our title was Drinking, Driving, and Drowsiness for a paper about how driving tired can be as bad or worse than driving drunk. First, we can just type it in, making sure to capitalize all major words, hitting Enter once so that we're on the correct line. Technically, MLA says to capitalize all words besides a, an, and, or, the, and short prepositions such as of, as, by, and so on. The next step is to center it, which is accomplished simply by clicking the center alignment button next to the right align button that we used earlier. If you don't see this button, Make sure that you are on the Home Menu tab. And that's it. The title is complete. To reiterate, then, for MLA formatting, titles should be centered. They should be in the same font and size as the rest of the paper, which is usually Times New Roman 12-point font. The title should not be bold, underlined, or anything else like that. However, you do need to capitalize all the major words. That is, do not capitalize prepositions like if, conjunctions like and, or articles like the, but all other words in the title should be capitalized. Do you have questions about this? Drop them down below in the comments area and I'll respond. Now, let's return to our paper in progress to discuss the next requirement, spacing. I mentioned previously that you should not leave extra spacing above or below the header. Most of you probably already know that your papers should be double-spaced. However, if you look, you can see that there's already some extra spacing between paragraphs, even though the paper is still single-spaced. We can solve both of these problems in the same place, the Paragraph menu. What you want to do is click the little arrow in the lower right-hand corner of the Paragraph section of the Home Menu tab. Once you click that, you can see that it brings up a paragraphing menu. We're actually going to want to do two things here, correct the spacing and set the indent, 
let's take a closer look at what we're going to be doing here. Here on the right, you can see a blow-up version of the paragraphing menu. We have three things we're going to want to do. We want to fix our spacing, the margins, and set the indentation that we need. Once we return to the paper, I'll show you a shortcut for each of these. First, we'll want to correct our spacing, which means two things. We need double spacing, and we need to eliminate the extra space between paragraphs that Microsoft Word automatically adds. First, to change double spacing, we click this line spacing menu. With the pop-up menu displayed, you can see that double is the third spacing option, and that is the one you'll want to select. Make sure either all or none of the paper is selected to avoid only double spacing a single line and not the whole paper. Next, to get rid of extra spacing, we make sure that both of the numbers in the spacing menu say 0. The default is 8 or 10, so you will need to fix this. Next are the indentations. You want to indent the first line of each paragraph of your paper half an inch, and you can do that here by putting half an inch into the box for the left indentation. Now, let's go back to the document to see this in action. However, I hope you stick around because at the end of the video, I'll reveal how you can make these changes permanent so you don't have to do this each time. Now, just as I discussed, I'll highlight the entire paper, click on the paragraphing menu, change the spacing from single to double, and eliminate the extra spacing by making it zero and hit OK. However, you can also use the Quick Access Paragraphing menu. I have reset the spacing so you can see how that works. Once again, simply select the area of the paper that you want to affect and click on the Quick Access Paragraphing menu. Select 2.0 to get double spacing and click Remove space after paragraphs to get rid of that extra spacing. And voila! You're done! Now we have only two things left, the font and the margins. First, the margins are simple. MLA requires that you have one inch margins on all four sides of the paper. To change the margins, we need to click on the Layout tab and then select the Margins option. You might have an option already for margins of one inch on all sides, as you see here, but if you don't, you can click Custom Margins to set them for the first time. You simply enter the number one in all four fields and click OK. The final thing to consider is your font. The requirement is that you, quote, use a readable typeface set to a standard size, end quote. MLA recommends Times New Roman 12-point font, and most teachers use this as the requirement. Make sure that your entire document is selected when you change the font to avoid changing only one word, or only the text after the current position. To correct the font, simply go to the drop-down menu under the Home Menu tab, and select the desired font and size. You can also simply click the font name or size and start typing to find it more quickly. And there you have it! All aspects of your paper are properly formatted to avoid unnecessary point loss. Thank you for staying loyal and sticking around until the end of the video. Now that you've made it through, you get to hear my awesome tip for making much of this process automatic. Now that we did all of that, you can see it's kind of a pain to go through, and you would probably like to avoid having to do it every single time you do a paper. Luckily, there is a way you can make some of these changes permanent. In particular, the spacing, indentation, margins, and font options 
can all be made permanent so that every time you open a document, it already has double spacing with no extra spaces between paragraphs, correct margins and indentations, and the font and the font size that you want to use. This trick is actually really simple. In the paragraphing menu, margins menu, and font menu, you simply look for the set as default button in the lower left hand corner, and once you have the setting you the way that you want them, you click it. Let's see what I mean in action. First, we go to the paragraphing menu. You can see the set as default button here in the lower section. Click it, select the option for all documents, and hit OK, and the settings for no space between paragraphs and double spacing will be the default settings applied to every new document that you open. We can do the same in the font menu, as you see here. Set as default, click, select all documents, hit OK, and Times New Roman 12-point font will be the default font for all documents. Finally, we again click Layout in the Menu tab to give us access to the Margins menu. Click the arrow in the lower right-hand corner, or select Custom Margins from the pop-up menu to access the full layout menu. And again, once your margins are the way you want, just click the Set as Default button here in the lower left and confirm in order to have the default be that you have one inch margins on all four sides. Thanks for sticking with me. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or found it helpful and comment below if you have any questions or anything that you'd like me to make a guide on. I'm here to help. All the topics I discuss on my channel and more are found in my textbook, College Reading and Writing, Information and Strategies, which I've linked below in the description box. I encourage you to check it out. Thank you for watching.